Assalamu alaikum jamian. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to Al Majlis. Uh, today, so my name is Jana Yamani. And I'm Dominic McVeigh. Today, we're going to be uh, going through an engaging discussion. So, this is meant to be, you know, a, a place where we brainstorm and talk and think through uh, what building a legacy means to each one of us. So we'll be asking a lot of questions, and we want engagement from the audience. And if you don't um, you know, want to answer, we're going to pick and choose. <laughs> so let's start. Well, it's fantastic to see so many people here today. Um, as I said, my name is Dominic McVeigh. And the theme of this conversation is, what is your legacy? But some of the things we want to touch upon today, and I'll talk you through my story uh, and what I understand my legacy to be, but I really want us also to think about the legacy that we are here to create. It's better in life to think ahead. You have this huge vision here in, in Saudi, you have a plan, and that will be creating the legacy of, of Saudi Arabia. We're not here as an afterthought, and I think with the many young entrepreneurs here in the room today, it's important that you too, as you go on your journeys, building businesses, uh, making an impact, and, and, and making a difference, that you really think about the legacy that you are creating as opposed to the legacy that you want to leave behind. In a nutshell, I'll be quick on my background. I started my first business when I was about 11 or 12. Um, some of you might be familiar with the fold-up micro scooters. By the time I was 15, I'd sold 11 million of these, and I became the UK's youngest self-made millionaire. Uh, I'm now 37, and I have had several businesses since uh, my school years, um, some with big success, some with failings. You know, one of the things we have to remember is that we're human beings, we're not going to get everything right, but we learn from those and we can make them better. My last business, I uh, was heavily involved in manufacturing of clothing for brands like Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfinger. Um, I had an organization employing 20,000 people uh, based in Ethiopia, in Kenya, Sri Lanka, Mexico, Bangladesh. But I made the business really think about the people and the communities that it worked in before I made it think about the bottom line. That business was an industry that I was not familiar with. It was an industry that I came about to invest in by accident. Um, but it was an industry that I was confident needed support, needed change, and it needed to treat the people in those industries better. Uh, and I decided to invest in manufacturing in Kenya because it was duty-free to the United States. And within six to nine months, I had several thousand staff doing $50 million worth of business a year because the Americans, they like duty-free goods. They like things cheap as we know. But I wasn't going to treat the workforce cheap or badly. So we invested heavily in our community, in, invested heavily in the staff, and we made sure that we made a difference with our investments, we made a difference with the jobs that we created, and we left something positive that the communities could be proud of, and that the brands that I worked with knew that we were doing something good. Uh, so that was a very short description of my last 25 years. But I've been on the journey of a young entrepreneur all the way through to a business leader. And now having taken my company public, I'm very much focused on my philanthropic interests and advocating best practices within businesses, ethical entrepreneurship, and also making sure that future generations can, can be the successes that they vision they want to be, as well as the communities that they're within. So I'm really excited to talk to all of you and hear from you today about the legacies that you want to create, the journeys you're on, the journeys you've been on, and, and what you see the future. So be prepared, as Jana said, that we're going to be coming back to you to, to hear your ideas as well. So when, when uh, uh, Dominique was focusing on his own business, I was mostly on a different track. Uh, so I uh, was educated abroad. I, I was born and I was raised in Saudi Arabia, educated in the US, and then decided to stay there for quite some time to get, to get more experiences. Um, while I was there, amazing transformations were happening in the country. Vision 2030 was out. 
and I felt like this was the turning point for me. I wanted to be part of the change that was going to happen over the next 20 years. So I decided to, came, to come back to the kingdom. And when I came back, I joined MISC. So it's amazing to be here today um, and to see where you know, that journey started. Uh, and I focused ever since then on capacity building. I, uh, I, I focus on trying to find the best talents in the country and develop them across different sectors and stages. And it's been amazing seeing examples of people that went through programs and now I see them in this forum, leading organizations and really realizing the vision of 2030. So, um, you know, with that, uh, we all go through this journey and our legacy starts by building it now. So today is going to be the reflection of your legacy in the future. Uh, I want to ask the audience, you know, we, uh, uh, Dominique, had certain goals, business and social development. I want to hear in short answers some of your goals. Anyone want to participate from the audience? Please. السلام عليكم. جانا حضرتك أنت بالإمبسي أكاديمي ولا؟ صحيح كنت. <تصفيق> طيب أنا الأسطورة اللي أبغى أحققها إن شاء الله إني أكون روائية على يعني الرواية تصل إلى العالم كله. أنا إلي إصدارات بالروايات يعني إلي مجموعة قصصية ولي رواية. فهذا هو الجول حقي. جاوبتك على سؤال؟ جميل جميل. So, so uh, just to, uh, to translate, uh, she wants to be a novelist. I am mean, a novelist already. She, she wants to uh, أنا expand أنا the distribution of the novel. Because I believe that the Arabic Arabic and the Arabic Arabic are very and they need to be able to and get to the world. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's a way to uh, propagate the messages that we have in yes. the region to I the rest of the world. I believe that the uh, Arabic literature and which has also طبعاً, Islamic values and yeah. Islamic morals should be translated to different languages. Correct. Okay, this is my goal. Shukran. Amazing. Amazing goals. I, I think this is, is fantastic. And I hope that your work, if it's not already, is translated into English so that I can learn your messages. Uh, but is this responsibility that you have in these goals which, which help society spread those messages, understanding, because the world is a very small place, but it, it, it often feels so far apart. And, and, and uh, I think that message also relates to business. When we communicate with our audience, our customers, we have a responsibility to, to, to take forwards, not necessarily measures of positivity. As an investor, we might be telling bad news, but we have the responsibility to make sure as many people understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. Uh, and, and, and the outcome in that responsibility. We have to remember it, even when you're posting on Instagram or TikTok or, 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 or talking with a colleague, you are an ambassador for yourself, you're an ambassador for your business. And, and uh, someone with the, the words such as yours as a novelist, it's, I, I very much hope that that, that legacy is taken forward. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sumayya Al-Qashqari from King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. I really, uh, my goal is um, I really want to participate in the success of the youngest generation. I look after my kids and I can see that there is a bright future and I want to be part of it and I want to build it with them or make it easier for them. That's it, yeah. So you want to do it through it's, uh, th that's, that's an amazing Inspi high level. Inspiring them, how, how I can inspire a uh, younger generation, how can I help in their success, how can I advise them uh, to be a leader, to be um, uh, someone who can inspire others and uh, with stories, with... Uh, <coughs> uh, Through yeah. mentorship? Yeah, mentorship, mentorship. Potentially, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I think mentorship, so uh, just to take... Uh, uh, a few minutes here. So I think mentorship is one of the most important things that helps in developing 
you know, youth in, in the fastest way. Um, so uh, as part of the work I do, I have project, uh, I'm, I'm managing Project 1932, which is a mentorship platform. And this is one of the ways that I feel that I can contribute back to developing youth. And so would love for you to participate in that program um, where we match, you know, little sibs and big sibs, and they go through a year of experience in engaging each other on their goals and development. Anyone from this side of the room? Um, my name is Ahmed. Um, I think uh, legacy is formed or created uh, once it's associated with a purpose. And uh, usually it's uh, developed and flourished when it's associated for, with a purpose that serves others. So uh, if you ask me about my legacy now, uh, maybe I need to find the purpose first. And this purpose should be about the, pe the people you care about the community that you care about. What do you want to add to this future? Um, I've had uh, a simple uh, exercise I've been through with a leadership uh, uh, instructor, and it was about uh, you in 20 years uh, walking down the island and meeting yourself. And what would be the first thing you will tell yourself in, in 20 years from now? So um, what, what, what made your success? from the stories that you've said in the, in the beginning, it's all, all what you talked about is others, purpose to serve others, something to do others. So for me, I, need, I still need to find this purpose. What, what we do now is uh, like day-to-day -day living. Uh, we're, we're just living our lives, uh, trying uh, na to navigate through life and what, what we're uh, facing. But once you find the right purpose, I'm sure you will flourish and develop easily. I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic point that you make. Um, a, a couple of reflections on that. When I was younger, I actually wanted to be in politics. Um, I'm cra I was crazy, I know. And you, some of you may be familiar with the chaotic state of politics in the UK. So I'm very grateful on reflection that I didn't take that decision. But I wanted to be in politics because I thought I could make a difference. But I quickly realized that having a voice through creating jobs, paying taxes, showing uh, future generations what's possible was far much, was, for me, was a far more powerful way to, to share what I thought was best with, with communities. And, but the key thing there is it's not about what I think's best, it's about having that dialogue and conversation with your stakeholders, with your family, with your friends, with the businesses that you work with. And really, where it gets difficult, and what I learned, is localizing what those priorities need to be. So when you're working in Kenya, there's huge lack of jobs. Those are the priorities. When I was building businesses in Ethiopia, education, although the Ethiopian government was claiming high levels of education, the education was non-existent. So what were the needs of the communities? And I think having that openness and that adaptiveness in those conversations with stakeholders you will start to feel what your purpose is, but your purpose always needs to remain flexible. So long as you stay true to you and stay true to, to your good values, those of, of your community, I think you, you, you'll, you'll be able to succeed. But don't worry too much of identifying that one thing that is the purpose, because a legacy can be something just by making someone smile. A smile is infectious. Being kind to others is infectious. Events like this today and the leadership that you have here in Saudi Arabia is infectious. It, it, it's, it, those small ripple effects will make your, that change. And it's, I think the journey that you're going on with, the, with the, the leadership and the thoughts that you are having are exactly the right ones. I'd also caution, we don't have to do everything today. I was full of energy at a very young age, and now I'm actually pretty chilled out. Um, so I'm, I'm glad I got ahead and took advantage of the energy that I had as a teenager because now I do not have the time and the pace and I'm 37. And I often think I wish I'd taken more time. So I know there's huge pressures. We have social media. You see people doing it today. Are they really doing it today? Are they really doing it right? By taking that time, that 20-year that journey, I think is, is really important. But thinking about it today is, is what's going to make every step a reality and take you closer to your goals. And I wish you all the, all, all the best of luck in, in that journey. Thank you. I want to ask another question to you. Yeah. So as Dominique was saying, the, the purpose is very flexible. It's dynamic. It changes over time. What is your purpose now? 
that, yeah. that's a good start. Yeah. It's to find the purpose, to find the right purpose. I, I think that's, that's a good one. <laughs> that, that, that's a purpose by itself, you know. Uh, but but uh, I just need to comment on what, what you've said. It's all related to the values at the end of the day. It's, uh, you, you need to name the values that, that, that you really believe in, you believe in, not that you hear about or you think about or you stick to or, or uh, you just animate. No, it's, it's about what you really believe in as values. And, and, and here's the starting point. And yeah. you can find the purpose from there. But, but it should stay flexible, I believe, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Asma Shmamri. And uh, the legacy that I'm so passionate about and I really, really want to work on leaving uh, is um, Saudi Arabia now uh, is focusing on uh, motivating young generation and youth and uh, trying to find their talents and uh, empower them. But uh, elderly and seniors are not really being uh, focused on, and uh, especially their uh, lifestyle, the routine that they do in their daily life is really, really uh, very bad. And this is my, uh, I'm a physical therapist and I work a lot with the uh, elderly and I see the impact of the uh, sedentary lifestyle and the lifestyle that they live. And I, the legacy that I wanna make is that I want to build associations, I wanna build uh, programs, uh, design programs to take care of elderly and seniors and try to obtain a healthier and more engaging in the community for their lifestyle. Well, I think that's fantastic. I'm you're making me think I should be stretching here on stage. Um, this, I mean, we have to look after our elders because that, that's, that's, for me, it's, I'm looking after my, my parents as they, they looked after me and hopefully one day I'll be best blessed with children myself. But physical activity, we used to do this in the workplace, actually. I had a factory floor, 5,000 people, humongous, as big as this building. And before every work shift, we were confident that getting people to roll their shoulders, standing up between class, uh, between, between sessions every hour, because they're often seated. People enjoyed it. They, lo they looked forward to the end of the hour. It distracted them from their work. And, and as they got closer to that hour, we stopped, we turned the music up, and people got up, they, 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 they rolled their shoulders, moved around a bit, just to keep the blood and the mind active. And, Activity in the workplace as well as in society is, is, is crucial. We have big problems in the UK with uh, diabetes and obesity, and it's a huge cost and burden to, to our healthcare systems and our society. And so anything that can be done to, to make people health, health is wealth, ultimately. So I think this is, this is fantastic. We'll take one more. Assalamu alaikum, this is Ali Al-Bassami. Uh, my father passed away in 2005 and he left us with a big portion. However, I lost it all and I was financially broken in 2011 and I lived in a hell for two years. And I decided, uh, I discovered like it's more related to the behavioral aspect. So in 2013, I, I developed a solution that's uh, with the passion just to help people, they suffer than they live the same journey. So between 2013 and 2018, the solution is uh, coming very customized. And I'm working with uh, Saudi regulations in the SAMA and financial industries to make this customized to the people. I was able in, in five years to raise six figures uh, amount. So uh, my passion is to help people to come over such of the financial challenge. And uh, with the great support of a uh, team that I'm working with, I think I can make this happen. Thank you. Congratulations on raising the funds. And uh, I think one of the most important and fulfilling things is when you take a pain that you went through and you turn it into a solution for a lot more people. Um, and, and maybe this is something that, you know, Dominic was saying about building a business. Uh, do you do you feel like this? You want this to be financially sustainable for you? So is this a, pure f a financial uh, business, or do you want this to be a social enterprise, or both? 
is actually a business, but what they unique about the business is going to be free for all of the users. So it's not going to cost them any single things. But we are a partner with these, uh, with our, we call them like our partners, which is the users. And it costs them zero to invest in our product just to change their behaviors and how to spend wisely. Uh, of course, we work with, uh, currently we work at three sectors, which is telecommunication, banks, and insurance companies. And through uh, these agencies, like we generate revenues. So, thank you. Amazing. I think it's in these journeys and your learnings are, are more valuable than than anything. What you've been through, we can't hypothesise or write a, a theory on this. It's it's your experiences that bring that value. Um, I mean, one of the things I wanted to say as well is that making change is not always the most obvious. It, it may come by chance, and you might not have thought about it. So, I mean, a lot of you here who have just had lunch, I'm assuming, or, or been drinking lots of coffee to keep going through the day. But in my factory in Kenya, when I opened it, I was told not to feed the staff, which for me was crazy. However, a lot of the factories around Nairobi, they don't provide food for, for, their, for their colleagues. So, I mean, if sitting here today, how many of you would feel productive if you hadn't had breakfast or lunch? Would any of you want to, to be here today if, if you hadn't been provided coffee and water and the wonderful teas that you have here in Saudi and the, the, the fantastic food that's on Vafra and the sweets? I mean, how would you feel about work? Would you want to be here? So, for me, it was important that my colleagues were fed. I wouldn't want to be at work not eating. And you have to remember, you might say, well, I could bring in a packed lunch or I could have breakfast at home. But the reality is in the communities that I work in, in Kenya and Ethiopia, there is no food. The people are very poor. And the jobs that we are providing will change that, are changing that. But there's a journey for them to go on to be in a position where they can, where they can feed their whole families or access to water. So I decided against my accountant's advice, to feed everyone, 6,000 people. And within 24 hours, I started receiving death threats from other industries and factory owners because no one fed their staff. Within 48 hours, I had several thousand people queuing at the gates of my factories looking for jobs. Today in Kenya, people feed their staff now. Now, for me, what we have done, we've changed the, the future working environment for Kenyan people. But that wasn't me thinking about a legacy. That wasn't even me being smart. It was just me being a human being and understanding that if I'm hungry, my staff are going to be hungry, and they're not going to work very well today. So it was business sense. Accountants will often say to you, there's no output. You're, you're spending $20,000 a month, but we're not getting anything back from it. It's, it's really hard to ascertain those human outputs, the, the value of a human being, but we have to destroy the numbers when it comes to that. You have to think about yourself, your family, your friends, your working environments. And I didn't expect it to be such a momentous change for Kenya, and I also didn't expect it to result in death threats, but it made a change and it's left a legacy. So that's what, something I'd like you all to think about, is how, how I can do better by, by my stakeholders, by my colleagues, by my community, because it will last. If it's, if, and ultimately, in this room here today, you, you want to leave a positive legacy. You're all positive people, so I'm sure every decision you make might not be the right one on the first day, or it might come with risks and challenges, but if, it's ha if you're happy for it to happen to you, then I'm sure people are happy for it to happen to them. It's been, a bit, it's been amazing. Oh. So we have one more. Hi, my name is Nali, and my goal is to spread movement um, throughout the kingdom, throughout the region, throughout the world. Um, in, tw in 2017, I started the first dance studio in Saudi with the goal of enabling sports in a way that spoke to people. Um, and we managed to move thousands of women and children across uh, the country. But since the pandemic, we had to close. Yeah. And now I'm at a point where I'm thinking, what's my purpose? How do I do this? How do I leave a legacy? What's stopping you now? Yeah. You closed during the pandemic. What about now? 
I guess fear of how is it going to be like, what do I do, how do I do it better, how do I have more of an impact. Maybe one thing that will bring hope is that I actually follow Nelly. <laughs> and I've been influenced by you. And now I've been exercising. So I never exercise in the past. But after following you and all the movement uh, posts that she, she posts, I'm now a more active person. That makes me very happy. Thank so do not underestimate the impact that you do on people. You've been extremely active on social media. And she has an amazing followership. And whatever you were doing, you were doing it right. I think repurposing uh, yourself in a way that will make you comfortable is the right start. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. acting on it. Yeah, because I guess your purpose evolves and it changes. And this is what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to get clarity on what do I do? Do I relaunch move? What direction does it take? What works now? Because what used to work prior to the t pandemic, I don't know if it works anymore. Um, but I keep thinking, I want, to not, I want to move the world. That was our slogan, don't just dance, move the world. <laughs> um, I'm just confused at the moment. How do I do it? And what, what step do I take? So social media has been a good way to continue as I'm trying to get clarity. Um, but yeah, I, I guess ha, I, it's just how do, how do I figure out what to do? How do I gain clarity? Do you have any advice? I think you've got to just start. You, the, the questions and the doubts that you have in your mind, you'll, you'll never have the answers to unless you actually try, try to challenge them. But it sounds to me that there's a lot of support in this room and beyond these walls, and that something was, was working before. I, I'm assuming you're, you're worried that things have become very digital, but something like dance, I would have imagined that people also want to share ideas and choreograph and, and learn. It's only so much you can do from a YouTube video. Um, it's not the same. It's not and, the same, exactly. I think you should just move, move get moving, and exactly. People. I think. Um, we're mostly discouraged uh, what actually people make us encouraged. Like people would, uh, I think if you talk to them, would help you re-energize in the things that will you know, be possible for you to do. They'll, they'll uh, potentially share their thoughts and opinions on what works and what doesn't work. And then slowly, I think getting that energy from people and from yourself would be a good start. Uh, Dr. Nazi, you wanted to... Uh, I have a similar story. Similar story, okay. Great. So maybe, maybe Dr. Nazi uh, can also give us an answer. I'll have to get your Instagram. <laughs> you know, I think one key element is, uh, is actually starting. Uh, perfectionism, sometimes people seek perfectionism. I will not start a project unless I am 100% sure that it's 100% risk-free. Mm. Uh, 100 percent profit uh, but it, it's not going to happen uh, you'll start you'll make mistakes and those who's ma who make mistakes grow with time uh, and I really think you should go ahead start opening something it might fail once try it again uh, I just want to share a story about this um, uh, my name is Nazi Alfmani I work with gifted students at Mohiba uh, I am a biomedical engineer uh, and my passion has always been to localize manufacturing of medical devices in the kingdom. Uh, and I've always been working in that direction uh, in many uh, aspects. Uh, one of them is to, uh, if I might not be able to do it, try to empower youth and direct their minds towards localization and towards uh, doing technology on ground. So. I was in charge of the uh, team that went to ISIF. Uh, I've been with the, this annual competition that we do for science fair, uh, the, the, the National Olympics for Scientific Creativity, where students from school years uh, submit their projects in research and we, they compete. This year we have 145,000 students wow. uh, participating with their projects and innovations. Uh, they go into series of uh, tests and yeah. uh, evaluations until we choose the best 35 uh, that will compete in the United States against the world. Every year we have been very successful. 
Uh, last year, uh, we had a record, uh, 22 prizes. Saudi Arabia was the second country after the United States, between 65 countries. And the interesting thing about one of the winners who got the second prize uh, in uh, material science, uh, 11th grade student, he participated in this competition four times, and he <laughs> failed. He never even managed to reach national level, four times. The fifth time was, was the charm, as they say, <laughs> and he managed to do it. He said every time it was something new for me, and I discovered something I fix in myself, yeah. and I tried to do it. So uh, it's all about persistency and passion and believing in yourself. Keep trying. You'll fail once, you'll fail twice. Edison tried yeah. 99 times to invent the lamp. Uh, he never c considered them as failures. He said, I am discovering one new way of not inventing a lamp. So uh, go for it, and you will succeed, inshallah. And congrats on the Saudi team. Yeah. That's fantastic. A very bad example, but I see KFC is quite popular in Riyadh. But Colonel Sanders was 65 when he started KFC. He failed so many times. He was a lawyer. He was a bankrupt. He even got charged for murder. Um, and I'm not suggesting that's a failure you want to go through. Point is, 65, Henry Ford, much older man. So don't let time feel like a pressure on you either. Of course, there's some exceptional, incredible young Saudi individuals winning world-class prizes. But you don't have to do it today. And as, as we've heard here, you get better the next time around. It's never late to start now. I don't think KFC is good for your movement, though. <laughs> Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yuchen, Yuchen Li. Uh, actually, I'm from China. Uh, I, I just take a uh, direct flight from Beijing to here 20 hours around. I've come here to just attend the conference, so I'm Welcome very to glad Saudi. to be here. Um, no, no, actually, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, I've been staying in Saudi Arabia for two years. I'm a, uh, I'm a Cal student, PhD student in Cal in Jeddah. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I really like here, like, uh, it's, it's actually my second hometown. Uh, I'm living there for two years. Uh, I really like here. So I feel like, uh, for me, like, this question, what is my uh, legacy? Uh, I feel like the definition is like, when I, when I get older, or even I died, what I can give others, like, uh, what my, like, how to say, uh, the thing that I can give others. So I'm a PhD. For me, like uh, my sorry, my like uh, work is like uh, writing a paper, uh, like uh, write some paper. And uh, for me, it's graduated. For others, it's like to boost the scientific uh, for all the whole society, international societies. So, uh, but I'm not sure. Like my paper is will be a great work or will be a bullshit. <laughs> I really don't know. Like. But after like years and years, like uh, someone will like judge it. Like, so for me, like currently at this stage, we don't know what our choice will affect to others. But maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, it will be uh, happening sometime. Uh, even some like for today, like I attend MISC uh, from, from the conference. It can be a normal day for me. I just, I just finished my school. I come here to attend the conference. But I also meet my new friend, Barbara. Uh, my Saudi uh, new friends, and uh, it's a, also can be a very like unforgettable day for me. Maybe we just discuss some big dream, like we want to create a company that's doing robot with AI. I'm working on AI. He's working on robot. So it can be some opportunity yeah. between us. So I feel like even today I come here, it's just very like a uh, clash or very like uh, in coincidence I come here. But I meet new peoples. I discuss with others. I learn more, and I also bring myself to others that then know China and don't know my background like AI kind of. So it can be like a legacy for, for others and also legacy for me. In current stage, we do not know like uh, how is it, but after 10 years, when, when they maybe I bring back, I say it, oh, I come home this com like a uh, conference, I meet my partner, we do a very good startup with next Elon Musk or Jackie Ma like, yeah. <laughs> Inshallah, like, so uh, it will be like, uh, for me, like, my, oh, like, my goal, like, uh, I'm a PhD student, I study around the world. I also connect the world, connecting the world. 
it can be my goal. Like I bring myself to others, I also learn from others instead of myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can see a lot of goals. <laughs> Scientific research, business, connecting to people. And that a robot, uh, AI. AI, he's a PhD in, uh, in uh, AI, and he's only 23, by the way. Amazing. So he's a genius. So we've been hearing a lot of diverse answers, but we haven't heard from the rest. So I want to maybe do a quick exercise with a show of hands. I think impact could be done through different means. And maybe the one that we've been hearing a lot is societal impact. So who wants to have societal impact as a legacy for themselves? That's amazing. So I would say 20, 30%. Who would want to build a business and have it you know, develop and succeed as a legacy? And you can, you can raise your hand more than once. That's more. Who see their family as a legacy? Amazing. Wow, almost everyone. Who thinks scientific experiments and discoveries is going to be their legacy? And creations, like it could be creative creations as well. That's a good 20-30%. What are other things? What are other legacies they haven't mentioned? Environmental, Environmental impact and support. Can you have the mic? Did Making a change in the, co uh, in the country in several ways. Uh, sorry. Yeah, um, actually what this, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. What distracted me from what I was planning to do this year is that I started a farm. Wow. And I become a chicken boss, that's what they call <laughs> me, my family. <laughs> but I'm an accountant by profession, uh, and I create also artificial solution uh, to sort out uh, also problem within work. And uh, you know, what's put me in um, emotional, what you said about Kenya. I'm f you know, um, now I'm emotional also. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's in our religion. I don't know if you have a faith or uh, not, some sort of a faith, but in our faith is feeding is a big thing. Uh, water is a big thing. Trees is a big thing. So for me, environmental distract me from uh, artificial intelligence. It did also from um, accounting and finance and businesses. Although, you know, I'm planning to, to proceed uh, with what I think is raised my organization and my country as well. We rank the first in, in the world for infrastructure uh, for a project I done in 2014. And so it was really good. Um, but what also, you know, put me sometimes also in an emotional mode when people talk about, you know, area which is resemble Saudi few decades or let's say eight years, mm -hmm. like Africa. Um, also, we anticipate, hopefully it's not gonna happen in Europe, uh, you know, a harsh winter. So your talk about humanity is really touched me. And I don't say this really to, because this is a buzzword. I really mean it. Um, I try to be collected and stoic, but you can't, I, you know, I'm not acting, I'm actually touched by what you said. And I think, you know, being human and uh, really uh, show vulnerability, not for ourselves and not shying away from uh, being very emotional. It's really, you know, I never cried in a meeting. I didn't cry now, but when you said the Kenyan and uh, the threat didn't bother me much, but you know, just the image, the imagination 
feeding people. Mm. Like for us here, alhamdulillah, we have a plenty. Yeah. Now when we take water to mosques, that's the most privilege that we do. I do charity in digital and also teaching students. Uh, I'm, I'm generation transformation as I learned here, but I'm an ex generation. So I also teach students applied accounting. So back to environmental, sorry for this, no, because please, it, it please. gets me really emotional. It's and you know, being emotional is not something, you know, especially for a person f like me, you know, sitting on boards and, you know, we've been taught to be very strong and all of that, but uh, actually you brought up this weakness inside me, not weakness, this human things. Yeah. So yeah, environment, uh, water, and really not to be just because it's the trend, uh, the plant and you know, um, when I learned about permaculture, because I want to grow organic, it's very difficult. I learned through YouTube that everyone is starting a garden in their backside, uh, <laughs> side, because people after 2020, they thought, okay, supply chain disturbed, yeah. and we want to feed ourselves. We want actually the basic security, water, and food, and that's it. Like no one worry about, you know, economy, well, in the, in the large scale, you will worry about it. But end of the day, you want food, you want water, and you want security, that's all. So thank you very much for bringing this. And um, God bless you. And there is a verse in Quran, which is said, you know, um, uh, can anyone correct me and my team, uh, miskin and your team. So you really inspired me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, su such kind words, and I think you, you bring it all back to reality as we're, we're coming to our final minutes, that we're all humans and it's important to remind each other of what's, what we stand for and what's most important. And I really believe that the, 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 the things most important to I are often most important to, to, to those around me. And we, we have touch points beyond what we know now. We, we have influence in parts of the world that we didn't know existed. And we have the power to make huge change here at home, but in such a great country as Saudi Arabia, it has that power to make huge change beyond its shores. Take those values, take those visions, build, build brighter futures for Saudis, but build brighter futures for others. And with the risk of climate change, and Saudi is very, a very resilient country and used to that heat, but we have, I've been in Somalia recently working with communities there. There, it, the land is not coming back. The, we can keep sending world food aid. We can see, keep supporting humanita with humanitarian assistance, which we must. But we also have to come to the reality that the lands that the herdsmen were, were, were grazing their camels and their sheep and their goats on will never, ever, from what I can see, be a place that those herdsmen can return to. So we, we now have huge swathes of society particularly in the Horn of Africa, very close to Saudi on your doorsteps, where we now need to start thinking about the innovation that we can bring to those societies to give them a prosperous future as well. And these are the things, I walk around London, I'm sure many of you have been to London, and London's a great place, but it's, it's got a lot of problems. And I sometimes find it easier to not worry about the problems on my doorstep, because actually in reality, they're nothing compared to what I'm dealing with in other countries. That's not to say I don't pay my taxes and I advocate and I engage with those in positions of power, but I also like to remind myself of those that don't have the privilege of being in London or being in Riyadh, and there are hundreds of millions of people out there. Now, I'm not suggesting we all go on a big uh, journey to feed the world, but that is part of our responsibility as global citizens as well. And, I'm, I'm very glad we could talk about these subjects and, and I, I hope the message travels far and wide with you all. And thank you all for sharing. I think this is a great start to building the legacy that we want. And don't forget, legacies change. Our goals change day over day. So start with the goal and the purpose you have today and try to work towards that. Thank you all for sharing and enjoy the rest of the conference.
Well, I did.